I actually read the book, the novel that this film is based on. I read it in 1996 or 97. I was working briefly in publishing for Faber and Faber, who published the book, and I read it in manuscript, actually. And then I forgot all about it. I really loved it. But then three or four years ago, the producers, Andrea and Lisa, phoned me up and said, you know, we've got this project. We hear you want to make a film in Africa. Um, I said, what is it? They said, The Last King of Scotland. And I said, oh, I love that book. So that was how it started. Then I got together with a writer, Peter Morgan, started working on the script, and, you know, here we are three years later. You've uh, changed Nicholas Garrigan's character a little bit to be a much more we, of a we've changed, we've changed the book enormously, really. Mm -hmm. I think uh, when, when Giles Foden, the, the novelist, saw it, he... I was sort of rather nervous about him seeing it, of course, because it is so radically different. I think there's only two or three scenes that are the same as in the book. And um, he came out and he said a very nice thing. He said, you know, the, the narrative is different, but you've kept all the themes. And in a way, it's like a great improvisation on my book, which he liked. He actually preferred that, I think, in a way, because it wasn't like him seeing the exact same things as he'd written, displayed wrongly in a movie. He could see it fresh, I think. So I think that's what we did. I, we felt that... Um, there were two main things that didn't work in the book in terms of a transfer to the screen. One was Garrigan's character, which was very passive in the, in the book, and um, we didn't feel that we could actually uh, retain an audience's interest in that kind of a character. And so that was a big battle to figure out who is this person. Because he obviously has to be, for the story to work, he has to be a very compromised, very kind of morally ambivalent person. So, uh, which is the same as Giles's figure. So we've made him a more active person. We've made him younger so that you can get away more with the naivety. And we've played up this sort of sense of denial, I suppose. You know, that he knows what's going on, but he doesn't want to see it because it's too horrific. And he's enjoying his life so much. He's enjoying having such a great time. So he's just, I don't, I'm not going to look at the reality of Amin's regime. And when he wakes up to it, finally, it's obviously too late. Um, and the second thing that we the second thing that we changed was really in some ways to go back to history a bit more, so that we follow Amin's rise to power and the reality of that, which was that uh, he was supported by the British to get into power, that um, uh, Amin was incredibly popular when he first came into power. He was a very you know a great populist, a great kind of politician in that kind of way, um, and then the slow realization not just of Garrigan but of Ugandans in general of the reality of what he was like so it was more of a kind of ramping up whereas in the novel we start already at the beginning we know what this man is like 